Hey everyone, it's Classic DM, and tonight's episode is going to be a, well, a video, I should say. We're going to draw some of the encounters and then do the time lapse, and I want to kind of walk you through the design in the front part here in the video. Then I'll time lapse the entire drawing, and then at the end we'll do like a quick debrief about the enemies and the encounters. Now remember, our characters haven't seen any of this yet, and so you're going to get to see, I'm going to release this video right before we play it. So you'll get to know, like as a dungeon master, like what they're going to be up against before they actually play it. And then when we play through the encounter, um, you'll see how it all unfolds folds and then we can kind of debrief that maybe in another video so let's go ahead and get cranking on this um what we're going to do first is uh take a look at what we had last time we have what we're going to do today is we're going to do this area five one of the options for the people in the community to vote on in one of the previous episodes was which approach did the team uh, our parties want to take to attack i'm not going to go through that you can watch that it's the end of one of the other previous videos so we're going to draw this area here so what we want to do in the original version of uh the village of hamlet there's nothing there. It's just a huge, massive uh, cliff. Let me show that to you real quick here. We got a little, uh, we'll pull our little lot side view up of the actual original. I like to use the Temple Elemental Evil version because it has a verbombunk and much more detail and stuff like that. Let's, if you flip down the way to the end of that module, which is like over 150 some odd pages long, you get this, uh, you know, bluff here with our North Arrow. There's like really nothing there. There's no description of anything. The only thing that really has any description and remember, our adventure is happening 40 years before this. This is level 32, which is like a waddle of huts and construction workers. And this is the overgrown road that goes to the moat house. So one of our options our players talked about they wanted to do, the viewers of the channel, is they want to kind of sneak up to the top of this bluff so they can see the whole entire village. But the characters don't know if there's anything there yet, where there actually is. So I've got an outpost up here with a few tents and stuff like that. So you've got some night guardsmen happening up here. So we're going to draw this, how they actually get up to the bluff and what the little encampment is. So imagine being like on top of the hill with like a little watch station in World War II. And you have to keep track of what's going on in the village. You need to raise the alarm, maybe signal to the moat house. So there's a little bit more uh, complexity of military history going on in the background that the characters are going to bump into. And it's not in the original module because remember this is all happening long before that. So I'm going to pull that out of the way, and let's go ahead and get this map made a little bit larger for you. Actually, I'm just going to put it here in the center. Let's just do that, okay? I'm going to start uh, drawing the stuff. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of this, and I want to do some design sketches for you first before we get the tracing paper out and start doing that. One of the things I want to do here is uh, if you take a look at this uh, paper copy, right, with this, is when you got a bluff that's happening like this, we need to come up with some kind of way to get up the bluff. So if you and I were gonna, if our commander told us go set up a, you know, something on top of this 30 foot tall or 50 foot high hill, you've got these changes in elevation, which are kind of happening like this, right? So these things, I got these things drawn kind of like this. That marker sucks. Let's get a different one. And here we go. This will work better. So we've got these different, you know, change in elevation. This might be a drop of like 10 feet. So this could be like, you know, 25 feet in the air. And this is 15 feet in the air and maybe another five feet. So this is all sloping upward if you're coming from the, in the northeast from your perspective. So this is all the bluff area. So this is all like a flat plateau like you might see in Arizona or something. So you can't really run up these things. If you think of these kind of things from a side view, they're going to be really sharp. They're going to be a sharp angle. You don't just run up the side of a 45 degree hill. So you're, you're looking at something that's probably going to go like, kind of go like this. Okay. And so each one of those little lines kind of represents one of these little changes in elevation. Here's like the regular uh, level for trees and stuff are happening like this in the background. So here's trees. Here's the size of dude. Right. So you get to run up to the top of this bluff. Now we don't want to make it just some, uh, you know, exercise run once like that. We want to make it a little steeper. So what we're going to do is because the distance between each one of these steps is pretty, pretty short, we're going to make this a little bit more sheer. So this is kind of like a side view. So to make this, to facilitate this, a lot of times you'll take pieces of wood and you'll jam them in the ground like this to create kind of a stairwell effect. That way you can step on the pieces of wood and you can drag stuff up there. There's no carts or anything like that. You can maybe ride a horse up here. So in essence, you kind of need to have like an earth berm uh, form of stairs to get up there. So with this type of stuff, we're going to draw this today. We're going to create a series of like, you know, wood lattice that's been laid on the ground to get down the ground plane. So it's kind of a controlled path to get to the top. We can put some torches up there. We can put some guys guarding the top. We can have the kids run out. There's going to be like a little path that leads along to get them back to the main base. We're going to have to design where that's going to be. To me, it seems like it make more sense if it kind of went around this way or maybe the stairs, the steps going up come along this side. If you were here and you were occupying this area, you would probably build your stair type thing happening here, not on the back. So maybe our party can see that and decide whether to come up here or they can sneak in the back way and surprise everyone from behind. So we're going to draw that next. 
and we're going to wing some of that along the way, just kind of creatively let the ideas flow. Man, this marker board needs to be clean. It's nasty looking. All right, so let's get our, I've already pre-taped down the trace paper, and you have to excuse me sniffling into the microphone a little bit. We've got a coronavirus here where I live, and good Lord, I hope I don't have it. <laughs> so we're just going to get this taped down. So what I'm going to do, in fact, let me just blow my nose. I'm going to mic this, mute this camera a second. Hang on. Good Lord, that sucks. All right, cool. <laughs> so here's our pencil. Yay, our crappy pencil, our, our great Sharpie, our fine tip Sharpie. And where's our other one we like to use? Here's all we really need for this, epi for this episode. What we're going to do, if you look at this thing here, it's pretty far across because each one of these little squares is 20 feet. And we're not going to draw the whole bluff. I'm just going to try to draw the main gameplay area. So what I kind of want to do is just kind of create a fictitious area to cover this little zone right here. So I'm going to focus on creating this, have the high bluff, have the water down below. This is a sheer drop off. You could kill some dude and fall him down into the river below, dump the bodies or whatever. And when the player's playing the adventure, if they decide to come into back wage, we will do random dice determinations. We don't really need to have a battle map for that. So we're going to have a kind of encampment happening at the top here. So I'm going to kind of create this a little loose on the scale and proportion. I don't want it to be an exact science. So let's just give us a quick idea how we want to do that. I'm going to leave this here floating on the side so you can take a look at it. So... I kind of want to capture the idea that this thing is sloping up, right? And I want to just have kind of like the bluff go like this. I'm just going to change the scale to facilitate the actual action that we're going to be able to fit on our small board. Now, one of the things I've been thinking about doing is getting, you know, I have multiple copies of these boards. Is if I had the camera further away and showing a lot of different boards at once, it's going to be harder. So we're going to do the stairs kind of coming up along here, which is going to be blocks of wood and stuff like that. So we go up 10, 20. And we got three of these elevation lines all together. And we may zigzag them some, make one bend this way. And we'll put this over here like this. This all blends together into one elevation change together. So this all needs to come around like that. And we got all this space over here to make an encampment. So from the encampment design, if you had someone at the top, this is the flat plateau up here. We'll just make this kind of go back to the full extent of our battle map. And we're just going to cheat the size of the space. We're not going to make it to scale. We're not going to make it, what is this, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 times 20 is 240 feet across. There's no way these are 5-foot squares. I don't want to have five of these boards side by side. We're just going to make this a more, the edge of the battle map. Just think of it as Diablo, right? So when you get up to the top here, if you were guarding, you want to kind of look, you want to look over this way. Let me show you that map again from our player panel, okay? You kind of want to look to the southwest over the village, and you kind of want to watch this. Uh, you want to look southwest over the village. Like this. You kind of look over this road, and maybe you want to be able to do some kind of smoke signal slash lantern communication with the moat house, which is way over that way, maybe peeking this way. There's no real need to go peeking off this way. So all your encampment stuff probably needs to happen along this area here. And the best encampment is going to be inland, you know, from the edge of the bluff. So dudes can be sitting on chairs or hanging out on rocks and looking over the top of the cliff. So we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to actually have like a circle of tents. And people don't live up here. This is you sit on guard duty for the whole night and you got one guy sleeps for two or three hours. Another guy gets up. I'm just going to put two little camping T-shaped tents here. They're like 20 50 feet long. We'll give them a cool campfire kind of in the middle thing happening like this or something. And we'll create maybe, let's create some kind of a, let's have a few rocks that are along here, right? We'll put a torch right here standing next to it so someone can sit in the rock. We'll also make kind of like this signal tower type of vibe happening here. And maybe that's designed to, you can light this signal tower and it just has a bunch of wood in it to alert the moat house that bad stuff's going down, right? Like American Indians with the smoke signals type of vibe. So you have this little vertical smoke tower. You just light the fire it lets the smoke house know that there's a major invasion happening here. So you have this kind of Civil War era tents going on like this. And this just all bends around the corner. Um, in the original map, there's really not a lot of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, there's really no um, vegetation to, to be had or anything like that. Let me pull this player panel away so you can see about the smoke. This is the smoke tower I was talking about. We just call this a signal tower, okay? Campfire, tent, tent. You know, sleeping bags and junk would be in here. So you might have two guards or three guards, maybe four guards at most. So they're just, it doesn't require 10 guards to sit on top of the hill and watch what's going on. So let's just go for it. I think a couple of rocks here is going to be fine. Um, I think we could put a couple, you know, boulder type rocks that they can use to sit on, on here. If you're on guard duty here, you might even have a little place where you've got some massive 
lifeguard chair thing you can sit in all night long with a bow and a crossbow across your lap and just watch this way. Maybe it's got a torch next to it. So we want a torch maybe here, a torch here, campfire happening here. If you ride your horses up here, you're going to place to tie your horses up. So the horses probably be tied in the back here like this. Let's say that the horses are a hitching post type thing. So you have horses would be back here. Just maybe enough room for two horses. And they may have, what else would you have here? You might have big stacks of wood, big stacks of wood to, to set the signal fire with. And what else would you probably need? You might have like, you know, some chairs that hang out here on your board. And you sit around, guys are telling stories to each other and hanging out in front of this campfire. Maybe some, maybe like a, maybe like a little table through here. Put all your junk on it outside. If you got food prep, you do all the food prep, bring it out here and cook. And then people just sit on their butt and eat. So that's kind of like our little Civil War era camp. Let's draw it. All right. So what's the first thing we want to do here? First thing I want to do is I actually want to just do the boards. So I'm just going to do this as a simple little ink lines to be little like, you know, two by 10 railroad tie type vibe. I don't want it to be super accurate. I'm going to make them kind of cock at an angle to make them feel organic. But I'm going to keep them all kind of the same length. So this is like something you just, you know, have you ever been to a state park where they have these kind of things? They have these wooden planks kind of set on the ground to create some kind of a spiral staircase for you to walk on without breaking your ankle. So you don't, and then when, the, when it rains and stuff, this won't wash away too bad. I'm just going to have a, do this just real loose, nothing too uh, critical. But it gives us something that's about 10 feet wide, so you could have a horse ride up the thing and drag a car, or two people could be fighting. This is all going up the elevation, right? So you get up to here near the top here. You have maybe like one more board here. So that's how they get stuff up here. And we're just going to do this little symbol here to represent a torch. We'll come back at a later date and make the torches cooler. And I'm actually going to do the uh, topography line. Just go ahead and just do it right now. This is like the edge of the cliff. Later on, we'll make that uh, more defined. That ink is dying on me around that edge like that. We can make sure that pen's not dead. I'm going to go ahead and put this other topography line along here. And later on, we'll put our little slash marks. Now, if you look at the actual original map, the river's kind of coming at the base of this all the way around here. That's not too critical, but the this river's kind of come along the bottom here. I'm just going to go ahead and cheat this in a little bit so you can actually have it as a feature on the battle map to say that there's a, the stream and the riverbeds happening down here below. Because these little details, you don't even see any of this in the actual original game. Now, this is even, even in here. We're just making this up. I'm trying to create something cool, the equipped space that would make sense from a kind of military operation perspective. All right. I'm probably going to hush up for a bit and mute the mic and just draw so I can capture the time lapse. But this gives you an idea what the roof, the rough, the roof, <laughs> the Duke Rufus idea is going to be. So we're going to have this coming up here. Boulders, little lifeguard chair type deal. Some boulders, chairs, fireplace, two Civil War style tents. Uh, signal tower. This is a sharp cliff. You know, stacks of wood. Table to you know put cooking supplies on. Place to hitch horses. Leave it like that. I'm gonna mute the mic and just draw. Talk to you later when we come back.
Okay, cool. We're back. All right. So this is pretty fast battle map. I mean, I think I drew this thing in like 30 minutes or something. It's just hacked together pretty quickly. Let's talk about how we're going to... Uh, what's the DM's perspective on this setup? So our players are pretty much probably... Let's just get some miniatures up here for a minute. Let's just say here's our fighter. Uh, where's our magic user? Magic user, a cleric girl, Seamus, <laughs> the druid, and our monk girl. So we got this party of six, right? If they decide to come up this back way, and let's put some guards up here. Let's say we got a crossbow girl up here. Say we have a couple of jokers with sword, short swords hanging out by the fire. They're still sitting together right next to each other talking the whole night away. And maybe there's yet, maybe someone's sleeping in the tent. And that's it. It's just four. Okay, it's a party of six. They're gonna, and they only really need to have four people at any one time up here. So when our kids arrive in on the cover of darkness or whatever you decide as the as the fans are watching the channel and directing the action, that when they actually come to this place, if you come here at night or during the day, your max situation is probably going to be four. If you if they try to come up this back way. Um, it's going to be kind of tough because all the scruffling and sliding down the hill kind of business that might happen. So you might alert the sound of these guys here. So we'll do some rolls. Like, so we'll make up some percentage rolls that can handle that. So they're making a bunch of noise and someone fails like a dexterity check. Um, we can make a bunch of noise and they can be down there. We could just use a blank white battle map. We'll just draw on the fly. But if they decide to do something like the monk and the, and the assassin hide and shadows that come up here, this is the line of sight of this girl's going to be up here, whether she's sleeping at the wheel or whatever. I mean, no one's really attacked this place, so it's not like you have a bunch of uh, Nazi Germany guys on high alert waiting for their French resistance to show up fully armed and start killing people. But this, you know, this is the first thing you're going to have to do. You're going to have to say this person here sleeping. These two dudes are hanging out by the fire. It's crackling, making flames. Maybe it's a moonlit night, and here's the tent. And this thing isn't lit. Remember, this is a signal fire in case of emergency kind of a vibe. So this person's kind of dazing off on top of like the lifeguard lifeguard chair. So if we do a stealth approach, it'll be interesting to see what happens there, where they can, do, where they decide to come around these rocks or try to backstab these two people simultaneously, and then how they deal with the person that turns around and takes a shot at them. We'll see how that plays out in the actual gameplay session. So now we we'll talk about balance. One thing that's really important for this kind of thing is that we don't make our first encounter wipe everyone out, right? And one of the ideas I'm thinking of going with here is I want to keep a decent number of enemies that are all like level zero men at arms. Um, as the players get stronger and more powerful, we'll create a little bit more powerful characters. Let me just pull up some stuff on the right hand side here for a minute. Bear with me a minute. And uh, we can talk about that really briefly from a game design perspective. Give me a second to pull up a book here. Let me just pull up the uh, DM screen. That'll actually help because you can see how I want to balance this thing. Because it's really important to me that the players and the characters get a chance to actually win a few battles. I'm not necessarily uh, want to wipe them out. I want them to start thinking tactically. and I want it to be hard. I don't want them to get destroyed. And we are giving the players max hit points. But the men-at-arms and the enemies are going to be like random hit points. They might be like two to six hit points, two to eight hit points. We treat them like a... Uh, like an enemy in the game. Let's just put, let me put this up here real quick. Hang on a second. Let me just shut up for a minute and get this uh, thumbnails up. All right. Let me pull this up on another screen so you can see it. And I'll make it actually a little bigger because it's kind of small. I'm just going to slide this over here like this so you can see it a little bit better. This is our infamous... Uh, <laughs> uh, and in fact, I'm going to do it this way. Let's control to this. Make this big, this big. There we go. And I'm going to just slide this over here. So I'm not super organized on this one tonight. I'm a little tired. We'll just pull this over like this, slide this over like that. Yippee, we're getting there. This is better than a college class. All right, so what do we got to work with here? So this is the weapons, whatever. You've seen this before a million times. Let's get down to the uh, uh, roll to hit tables here in, a, in the, uh, um, the DM screen. So I don't want to use the... Uh, you can or you can't. There's a couple ways to do this. One way to do this is have zero level, which is this where you see my mouse cursor here's over on the left-hand side, zero level man-at-arms type characters. Now, that's usually what I like to do because that's what they are. They're human, they're human characters, right? These are all human little baddies. These aren't uh, monsters. You know, it's like chimeras and stuff like that. So 
I'll probably just use the fighter table for zero level halflings and humans, right? Which means to hit some of these armor class numbers that our party has, in fact, I can pull the character sheets up here real quick too. We need to think about balance. We need to make sure that the uh, balance number for the characters to hit is going to be pretty decent so we aren't whiffing all day long and that the enemies aren't necessarily well geared and destroying the devil out of everyone. So let me just make this a little bit smaller so you can see a little bit better. Make this one view, one screen. I'm going to just kill this over here on the side. I'm just going to flip to the characters real quick here. Let me just make change this uh, display theme to show the navigation panes. So I can flip between characters really fast. All right, so, okay, our dwarf fighter, he's going to have armor class zero. So for these jokers to hit armor class zero, you're talking about a natural 20. So natural 20 for the uh, zero level men in arms that you're talking about right down here, okay? We're looking at this column here. For them to hit, uh, it's hard to highlight. For them to hit, there's going to need a natural 20. So it's just this one right here, right? Let's just highlight that. And this one right here, they're going to need a natural 20. 19, and it just goes down from there. 18. 17 to armor class 4. So if you look at our party, we've got, you know, armor class 0. It's going to be pretty hard for them to hit him. So if he comes, he could probably just bum rush somebody, and he'll probably be okay. So from a DM's perspective, that's okay. And for the cleric, who's AC3, they're probably not going to hit her very good either. They're going to need natural 18s to hit her. They're not going to have any bonus to hit. They're going to have crappy little weapons, little, little light crossbows, little short swords. They're not, like, equipped with two-handers or anything. Um, I'm probably just going to throw them in, like, crap leather armor um you can look at the armor class table which will probably be like armor class eight or something it's in here somewhere i'm not going to try to find it right now um here it is right here so leather armor or padded armor so consider the bad guys these zero level minute arms jokers in our map here to be like wearing just some crappy leather jerkin uh, and they're just you know using a light crossbow and short swords maybe having a dagger and you're going to have like maybe a maximum from one to eight hit points i'll actually uh write this up and share it with you when we're actually playing the fight itself which would probably maybe do this weekend depends what people pick um so the odds are that our heroes are going to do pretty decent if they let if they do a melee bum rush type of a situation um if they try to sneak up and do backstabs, okay, so if our assassin, which is Seamus Shovelin the Embalmer, or Rhea Indir, who's not the brightest young lass in the world with eight intelligence, if these two try to do their hide and shadows, which is pretty small, like a 10% chance for the monk, and a hide and shadows for the assassins, 15%. But even if they just use the cover of darkness and try to get in here and sneak around, um, and it's doing it at nighttime, and they're trying to do it the best of their ability, I will use kind of a commandos style line a site situation not like elder scrolls online but let me just explain to you how i would do that so you know these characters are, are can see here other peripheral vision but they're really only focusing on this area here turning and looking to each other so that means their blind spots are pretty much completely here they're not going to see anyone coming unless you're clinking around in plate mail for this person sitting on the lifeguard stand if you come you know quietly walking up this thing here and these two torches are lit you're going to be illuminated as soon as you get into the space so even if you were hiding in shadows the moment you get to her here this person's going to see your other peripheral vision so the odds are this person will raise the alarm and yell something and then a fight will break out so we'll see how things play out with the actual characters but going back to my original discussion, say they were just somehow able to take this character out. Maybe she gets down off the lifeguard stand and she walks over here and smokes a cigarette or whatever they do back in those days. And they decide to somehow come over here and backstab her or make her noise and pull her away and kill her isolated. These guys, don't, and they can do it quietly. They like splinter cell mode. They won't even know that she's there. This person is you know, considered sleeping. Okay. So from the perspective of them doing a stealth attack, kind of like in Crisis, that's a viable option if they can isolate this character. But this is only 10, 20, 30. 30 feet away. 30 feet away is not very far. That's going to be really, really tough. It might be a real failure. We'll see how that goes. So I don't mind my you know, players in my table, my game, to do common sense style stealth actions. Um, when you do move silently and hide in shadows, I give you the full benefit of you just can get right up next to someone they can't even see you, especially if they're shadows. Let's go back and take a look at the character sheets again. So if they try the stealth method, that will probably work. Um, you know, everyone's level one. They don't have a lot of spells. They're not going to do anything too incredibly powerful uh, to do much. I mean, you're talking about eight hit points in armor class eight. For them to hit the druid, they're going to need to hit only a 13. So, you know, people like the druid, um, Aragal, 
and uh, he's going to get hit really easily. Liz Fannin will probably get blown apart. I mean, she's AC-10 for a random uh, level 1, level 0 man-at-arms are going to need an 11 to hit her. So that's going to be really bad. They're going to definitely not, in the early days of the adventure, to be focusing on being an asset to the party by doing damage but not ever being focused. They're going to need to stay out of line of sight. They're going to have to support people. They don't have a lot of ranged attacks. But they can still rush up there and stab someone with a dagger or a jackal with a scimitar. So we'll see how that's going to play out. But that's basically what I'm thinking. So I wanted to give you this kind of behind-the-scenes thing. If I was running this for you and your kids or something or your friends from work or whatever, this is the kind of situation it's going to have happen. So as the players come along here, when they're down here, you know they won't be able to see who's up here. But if they tell me that they want to see way back over here in the woods and they're looking up here, I wouldn't tell them that there's someone sleeping in the tent. That'd be kind of like a fog of war situation. They might just see this person here. Two dudes sitting here, these you know, red-haired fire node type barbarian raider woolly bay bastards. <laughs> these guys sitting here at the campfire are completely illuminated. She's sitting next to a torch completely illuminated. There's a level in Lord of the Rings online that has kind of an, a, an outpost like this. It's an orc outpost. So if your characters are casing the joint well ahead of time, uh, they're going to probably have two or three different options, and we'll see how that goes. And we've done this before in the Glacier Earth and Frost Giant Jar on the Steady Hill Giant Chief. So anyway, without getting too carried away, that's what I'm thinking from a design perspective for their first kind of major combat scenario. If this be, if this, if this, excuse me, <laughs> if this ends up being the encounter that happens first, but I got this figured out in design now, so all I need to do at a later date is just change the time of the day and the positioning of people and we have a little sandbox here we could do whatever we want to do our characters could end up coming up here and using this as a camp to some degree as long as no one finds out that all the guards are sitting on top of it are dead right so it's pretty cool stuff designing things is fun you know you're thinking ahead of time what the players might do you're creating some challenges for them to kind of figure out and they have a fair chance and it doesn't seem unreasonable there's no surprises no stupid traps or anything like that's going to kill anyone you want them to have a chance to try to win and use some tactics and figure it out and that's what you know creating gameplay for other people is all about so this the end of this video here we'll leave it here at like the we're, we're at like the 49 minute mark and I'll time lapse all the record the drawing parts so that'll be make, it'll be a much shorter but uh, you know we'll do the next area we've got you guys are voting for some of the other areas I got some farmhouses and breweries to draw so we're gonna do that and capture that and once we have everything drawn and we see what everyone picks we'll we'll start playing it see how it goes all right cool we'll talk to you later hope you had fun see you.